church mercy um, I'm standing here this morning as a vessel for God uh, you know there are members of this church who has a nickname for me you know Brother James, Sister James, and some other friends, they would normally refer to me as Jonah. Interestingly, my name can actually spell Jonah. <laughs> um, the reason why they always say that is because I'm a young man that loves to run. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of times God would have shown me things, and my first choice is to run. But today I can tell you guys, I have accepted the call to be a watchman on the wall of Zion. And the truth is, I couldn't run anymore. So I will just share with you something leading up to this series. I was at home. As some of you know, I work from home sometimes. And I don't know if this has ever happened to anybody. First, disclaimer, I am not a prophet, guys. I don't think so. I don't believe so. But I was at home and I was laying down and I started seeing things. And initially I was a bit scared to share because I don't want anybody to believe that I'm superficial and all of those stuff, right? And I started seeing some stuff and I remembered I said in my mind that God, please don't ask me to do these presentations. Because I don't want to do it. Because the truth is, while I was seeing those stuff, I was laying on my bed and everything was unfolding before me. It was cutting me deeply. Because I'm a part of the church too. And, uh, you know, I tried to find excuse. I remember I said, God, you said in your word, take out the beam out of your eyes before you see the moat in somebody else's eye. And I remember, because some Sabbaths, you might not see me at church, but... I normally like to go out in the street, and I love to go out in nature on some Sabbaths. I don't really come to church. And I remember one Sabbath, we went out for divine service. And my mind was pressing me because we were looking at the book of Matthew, myself and my friends. We were looking at the book of Matthew, and for some reason, for probably about two weeks, my mind kept pressing me. Study the book of Ezekiel. Study the book of Ezekiel. Now, the book of Ezekiel is a book I would have gone through probably twice or thrice, right? And interestingly, when we got to the park, I followed my mind and said, you know what? I'm going to go through the book of Ezekiel. While we were there going through it, I realized God gave Ezekiel a message, and he was one of those prophets, along with Jeremiah and Isaiah, speaking about the abomination of desolation. But I realized something. He said to Ezekiel, fear not, for I will be with you. And I took courage for that, because I've, as I've grown, I realized the truth is an offense to people who doesn't want to live by truth. And interestingly, Christ brought a text to my memory from the book of Luke. He said, the time will come, they will throw you out of the synagogue. People, get ready. Are you ready for, if I am not availing myself to God, and you see me here singing and preaching and all those stuff, are you ready for your hand to betray you? If he's not surrendered to God. We see everybody here looking lovely and we know our one another. The truth is the person sitting beside you. If not surrendered to God, will probably be that one giving up you for persecution. Are you ready for the trumpet of the Lord? And you know, while I was there and going through the book of Ezekiel, I remember all of the stuff. I was even washing the plate at home. And things just, I just kept seeing stuff. 
It was so frightening. I remember I went to Brother James and started talking to him and I talked to Sister James because they live close to me. So they're easy, the easiest Adventists I can run to, right? And I was there talking to them about stuff that I'm seeing and all of that. And I remember I was saying to God, God, I don't think I am the person for this. Because the truth is, most of what you're showing me, the church already knows it. I said to God in my prayer that I would rather to go and pulpit on the wheels and to preach these messages to people who don't really know you or who have accepted, who haven't accepted you as yet. But I want us to turn our Bibles to the book of Ezekiel. I'm just sharing with you some experiences I had leading up to this series. Ezekiel chapter 3, and I'm going to read from verse 5 to about verse 7. And while I was there praying and saying, God, these people in the church, Israel, modern day Israel, they already know. In fact, some of you in this church probably know this message better than I do. But then God reminded me while I was there praying. The book of Ezekiel, it says, For thou art sent to a people of a, uh, not, for thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel. Not to many people of the strange speech and of a hard language, whose words you surely can't not understand. Surely had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. For all the hosts of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. Now this message for this Sabbath, well for the entire series, is something we all know. And when I read this text, I still battle with God and struggle with God in saying, no, I'm not a person. And then he reminded me of a text in the same Ezekiel. He said to Ezekiel, if a man is in his sin and I sent you to him and you refuse to tell him of his sin and he die in his sin, your blood is upon, his blood is upon your shoulder. And when I remember that while I was praying, Brother James, I also remembered re reading the, the great controversy that two persons got the visions before, the message before Ellen White. One refused. And sad was his cry. And while remembering all of those of us, I said, God, yes, I will do that. It so happened that on Wednesdays, I choose not to go to work. I choose to fast and pray on Wednesdays. And I was fasting and praying about everything I was seeing. And, you know, I called Brother James and I was there talking to him. And I said to him, I have a message to share with the church. And he said, okay, I will talk to pastor and we'll have you present on one of the Sabbaths. You know, after he came off the phone, this is very interesting. Well, it was very interesting for me. When he came off the phone, I was there praying again. And I was saying, God, how will I use 30 to 45 minutes to compact everything that I've been seeing for the past three months? And, you know, as I was about to get up off my knee, Brother James called me back. And he said, Johan, I'm at church now as we speak. And I'm at the altar praying. And you appeared before me. Can you do a series? <laughs> and I was like, yes. Because I was there praying and saying, God, how will I do this? Because there's a lot of stuff. How will I do it? But I say to you today, church, this message is a message of love. Not to condemn you, not to curse you, or anything of that sort. But if we are designed of to be saved. The Bible says, whom the Lord loveth, he chastens. So we're looking at people get ready. And if we look in our world today, 
we can see that even, even people who are not so biblically inclined can tell you that something is about to happen. And I don't know if you recognize that even the animals, you remember some birds that you normally see in Jamaica? All around you realize you don't see them anymore. In fact, I was even looking at some of the fruits. I remember as a young child growing up, going to the shop, almost all of my neighbors would have a passion fruit and they run on the walls and you could pick passion fruit. When last you see passion fruit? When last you see some fruits that we had easy access to? The signs of the time are telling that soon and very soon, Jesus will appear. You know, Brother Jim said something. Today might be your last. You could die when you leave. But I want to add to that as well in saying, Jesus could be calling your name in heaven right now. And will he be able to say, my blood, my blood, Father. So people, get ready. The great and terrible day of the Lord God Almighty is fast approaching. We see the signs all around us, trouble, strife, and raging wars. The cost of living has skyrocketed, and parents have lost control over their children. People possessed by demons walk among us. While diseases spread like wildfire, some say these ailments cannot be cured. But the true solutions are pure air, sunlight, temperance, rest, exercise, and proper diet, water, and trust in the divine power of God. Where leaders are flexing their muscles. And the trumpet of war has sounded against the commandment keeping people of God. But the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. The stench of sin has reached up to God. And our streets have become stained with blood. The world has disregarded the laws of God, keeping nine commandments, but refusing to honor one. Yet thus said the Lord God Almighty, if you err in one of my laws, you are guilty of all. The world has gone mad. Churches are replacing the sacredness of God with secularism. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant, dumb dogs who cannot bark. They sleep, lie down, and love to slumber. Yes, they are greedy dogs that can never have enough. They are shepherds who cannot understand. Each look to his own way, seeking gain for themselves. Church members have the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. People, get ready. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. The day approaches swiftly when Christ will conclude his intercession in the most holy place. Are you ready to live without a mediator? When Jesus put off his priestly robe and said, It is finished, it is done. He that is holy, let him be holy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is filthy, be filthy still. Church, get ready. Is thine heart right with God? We're going to pray. Please stand. Sister Patrice, can you sing with me? Anointing, fall on me. Anointing, set me free. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Anointing, fall on me. Oh, 
loving Lord and our Father. We stand in your presence today in awe of your glory. Father, we stand as messed up people, messed up vessels in need of a revival from you. As Steve Green sing the song, touch your people once again, Jesus. We need a Holy Ghost revival in our hearts. We need reformation at home. We need it as an individual, as church, as people, as a nation, Lord. Lord, we are loving the pleasures of this life and not the things of Christ. Father, your coming is near and yet our sins are so many. God, I pray and claim your promise as you said to Isaiah. You will blot away the dross and the sin from our lives. Today, God, as we stand, we'll lift our hearts before you. Empty us, Lord, of inward sin and carnal weaknesses, Jesus. Purge our minds, Lord. Blot out our transgression, Lord. Create in us a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within us. Cast us not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from us. But Lord, as we come today, speak to our hearts. Speak to our minds, Lord. Transform us, some of us, God. We are walking dead spiritually, Lord. Revive us, Lord. Revive us, we pray. Father, I pray that your words will go forth with power and with clarity. Hide me beyond the foot of the cross, Jesus. As John says, I must decrease and Christ will increase. Increase in our hearts today, we pray. In Jesus' name. So brothers and sisters, get ready. Because the great day of the Lord is my time. I want to read a quotation from gospel workers that speaks to my heart. It says, the 24th chapter of Matthew is presented to me again and again as something that is to be brought to the attention of all. We are living in the time when the predictions of this chapter are fulfilling. Let our ministers and our teachers explain these prophecies to those whom they instruct. Let them leave out of their discourses of minor consequences and present the truths that will decide the destiny of souls. And this is the reason today I have chosen the book of Matthew, Matthew 24, to present the, the, the present truth of the time that we are living in. And it is interesting if we go to Matthew 24 and we're going to read from verse 3 about to verse 18. And it's very interesting that when the disciples asked Christ, what is the sign of your second coming. In verse 3 it says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? You know, people would say that, because I've had conversation on the road, when I say, people, Jesus is coming soon. I've even heard Christians say to me, Jesus is not coming back anytime soon. Because there's so much things to be done and all of that. But if you're one of such who don't believe that Christ is near, Peter talks about you. He said in the last days, there will be scoffers. And I tell you today, every single one of us is a part of this great controversy. And we all are a part of fulfilling prophecy. But my question to you today, which side are you fulfilling? Are you a scoffer today, not believing that Jesus is soon to come? And in verse 4 it says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, 
Take heed that no man deceive you. You know, every time I go through this text, I always say to myself, why didn't Jesus just say earthquake in various places or natural disasters, etc.? Why is it that the first thing he said, see that no man deceive you? Brothers and sisters, the simple message is, know Jesus for yourself. The Apostle Paul says, let every man work out his salvation with fear and trembling. And I tell you today that being a mere member of the church register does not save. It is a relationship with Jesus Christ. When I reflect on John 10 verse 26, my sheep hears my voice and they follow me. My father has given them unto me and who is able to pluck them from my hand. Moreover, who is able to pluck them from my father's hand? So Jesus is saying, my sheep, they know my voice and I also know them. Many of us, we say that we know Jesus. When I reflect on Abraham, when Jesus was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, and he said, how can I do this thing and not tell my friend Abraham? How many of us today, God can say, you are my friend. Yet we say we know Jesus. Walking dead spiritually. Having the form of godliness. So brothers and sisters, take heed that no man deceive you. Know Jesus for yourself. Know the word for yourself. Because deception will arise from within and without. I encourage you today, spend time with God. I've all often looked at it this way. Jesus said we'll live with him forevermore. Amen. But if we can't spend an hour with Christ on earth, which heaven you plan to go? What is an hour compared to eternity? When you're in the presence of God. Sometimes we have presentations at church and we say, oh, it's too long. And so on. At home in our own devotion, we are so busy, caught up with work, and we just pray a five-minute or ten-minute prayer. May God have mercy upon us. And may we find Christ for ourselves. He said what in verse 5? For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. Mercy. Deception. If you don't know Jesus. Jesus said if it were possible, down to the very elect would be deceived. So you think just being a mere member of church will save you? It's knowing Jesus and being anchored in Christ Jesus. It's very interesting. I see where his sister White says in last day's event, not one in 20 whose name is registered on the church book is ready to close out their earth history. May God have mercy upon us. May God have mercy on me too. Many shall be deceived. I pray today that none of us will be counted in that number. That will be deceived. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Are we seeing that today? We would have seen the war in Russia, between Russia and Ukraine. We would have seen where even our country, who, which is filled with crime, sending soldiers to Haiti to fight war. And I tell you the truth. This is what the Bible says. There shall be war, but some of them will be rumors. Is there an agenda behind the rumors of war? I find it interesting that when uh, Russia and Ukraine was in this battle, they're saying food shortages because of Ukraine producing grains and all of that. Is it a rumor that they're trying to lead to something to cause a famine on the earth? 
And as I say famine, brothers and sisters, I'm reminded by the prophet Amos. There's coming a day. There will be a famine for the word of God. So many of you come here. You wait to hear brother James, brother Mitchell, brother Picking, or whoever do Bible study. I dare say again, know Jesus for yourself. So there shall be wars and rumors of war. But the Bible says, Jesus said, see that ye be not troubled for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. But this is telling me that the end has begun. Because I'm seeing the wars and I'm hearing of the rumors of wars. And he said what? For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquake in diverse places. Brothers and sisters, aren't we seeing a famine in Jamaica right now? You know, we look at Jamaica and we say, we, 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 we can't have a famine because we're a bread basket, right? I find it interesting that when Beryl came, it hit the bread basket parish, St. Elizabeth. But Jesus foretold that famines will arise. And he says, pestilence, diseases of all sorts. We would have seen COVID-19. And trust me, there is more on the arising. And he also says that there shall be earthquakes. How many earthquakes Jamaica have since the past two years? And this year, mercy. We have so much. Can't count. Well, I, I don't know the number. But I know we had quite a lot. And would have seen natural disasters. We look at Florida being destroyed by a hurricane. And how many tornadoes I saw in the news that says was there in Florida. So I guess the earth is crying out. And seeing something is happening. But I also want to take this time, brothers and sisters, to remind you that this global warming agenda that you see on the news is to lead to a goal that the devil is working through the powers that be to bring upon this earth. I share with you, turn your Bibles to Ephesians 2 and verse 2. It says, wherein in time past, he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Thank you. My brothers and sisters, you think it is a coincidence why scientists don't believe in Christ? What did the Bible say? The prince of the ear, which is the devil who worketh in the children of disobedience. Let me tell you, a lot of these things that you're seeing happening, it's caused by man. The devil has influenced them so much that they think that they're doing good and, and all of that. But let me tell you, brothers and sisters, the battle is raging. The trumpet of war has sounded. Because when we see these disasters, my Bible tells me that the commandment keeping people of God will be blamed. And let me tell you, my Bible tells me in the book of Peter, we have a more sure word of prophecy. So I'm not telling you if not, but, but I'm telling you, thus said the Lord God Almighty, this must come to pass. Brothers and sisters, are you ready? When you will be blamed for the hurricane, for the famine, for the pestilence, for the straight truth of God that you hold. Are you ready for what is coming up on this earth? May God have mercy upon us. In verse 8 of Matthew 24, it says, All these are the beginning. Of sorrow. So are you telling me that Jesus not soon to come? Aren't we seeing these signs happening? Even sinners can see it. Those who don't go to church. So what happened to the watchmen on the walls of Zion? 
May God have mercy on us. In verse 9 it says, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Are you ready for the war that will start in the church when we hate our one another? Are we anchored in Jesus? Because Jesus is the only strength and refuge that I know and that the Bible says can save us and protect us for what is coming upon this earth. And you know, interestingly, it says in verse 10, And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. What offense? Truth. So will the truth be preached from this pulpit? I guarantee you members who are not anchored in Christ will and must be offended. But stand on the truth of God. Don't waver in your faith. Proclaim that thus said the Lord God Almighty. If they want to be offended, that's their business because Jesus wants to save. That's why he gave that message. I believe in all my heart that Christ, Brother James, would have done everything possible for us to be saved. And these message of love is saying, get ready. I am coming. Stop sleeping at church. Every Sabbath we come on a warm bench. And Jesus don't know us. Some of us, we can quote spirits of prophecy and Bible from now till the morning. But when Christ return, Jesus will say, depart. I know you not. Get ready, church. Get ready. Is that heart right with God? Mercy. Are we are we treasuring our petty sins and hooking up sins? calling ourselves sons and daughters of the most high when the, the, the trumpet of war is sounding and we don't have the armor of God and we see that we are marching to Zion it's an army that marches I wonder which Zion we are planning to march to not the one that the Bible tells me about with the messy lifestyle that we have Brothers and sisters, the truth is an offense, not a sin. If you're holding to the truth, and let me tell you, Brother James can't know God for Abby and Stephen. In fact, his righteousness is as filthy rags before God. He has to see Christ for himself. So children, I tell you today, your mom and your dad can't save you. As young as you are, seek the Lord or while he may be found. The Bible says in verse 11, Many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. Are we seeing that? Since COVID-19, Brother James, is the most profits I've ever seen on social media. But let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Jesus said a prophet has no honor in his country. Jesus said, broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many shall find it. And narrow is the road that leads to life eternal. You see the crowd following these prophets? My Bible tells me, Brother Mitchell, that God is never with the majority because the majority always want to go against God. Look at Noah's time, eight persons saved. Mercy, I wonder if God can find eight in here today. So false prophets will arise and we, we are seeing them all around. Everybody about the prosperity message. When my Bible tells me, judgment is what Jesus preached. Judgment is what Isaiah preached. Jeremiah and Ezekiel, the prophets of old, preach judgment. And you want to hear feel-good message? 
Let me tell you, Christ would have done so much to be sending your feel-good message. So you think his sacrifice must go in vain? You can't imagine taking a crown of thorns that every one of us deserve. The beating, a matter of fact, condescending to humanity was a humiliation for Christ. And he took that on for you. And you want to waste God's grace, continue in sin. But my Bible says, should I continue in sin? Because grace abound. God forbid. And it says in verse 12, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And I'm not even going to talk about the world now. Talking about Zion. Talking about Israel. We don't know how to love. We don't know how to love. And you know the issue why we don't know how to love? Jesus is not in us. Because my Bible says that the carnal nature is enmity with God. But any man comes in contact with my Savior. Can't remain the same. And my Bible says that God is love. So when God lives inside you, love must come from within you. So why is it the church don't know how to love? Brothers and sisters, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call up him, upon him while he's near. We need Jesus in our hearts today. And it says, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. The rest is not for the swift. But for those who can endure, let me tell you, even though I'm showing you all these signs, if you're anchored with Jesus, fear not. Because I tell you, the, 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 the prophet Daniel tells me that my call, there's a day coming when my call will stand up. The great pains to deliver the people of God. Just find your anchor in Jesus. I want to pay attention to verse 14. It says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. I don't even want to go much in this because this is for our next night. But let me tell you, brothers and sisters, this gospel that Jesus is talking about is not, oh, everything about blessing, blessing, blessing. This gospel, my Bible tells me in Revelation 14, 67, and I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, unto every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, fear God. Reverence God. Give glory to him. Allow God to live in your life. Jesus said his father has glorified the son. How is that? Because he do the things which pleases his father. Can God glorify us today? May God have mercy upon us. And John said in Revelation, For the awe of his judgment is come. So judgment must be preached. Whether you want to hear it or not. God said to Ezekiel. Whether they want to hear or forbear. I sent you to a rebellious nation. The judgment of God must be preached. Must hit the nail on its head. One of the reasons why we are lukewarm. Too much feel good messages. We need men and women of God filled with the spirit of God. So God can move in the hearts of his people. What did John say? And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. Turn your Bibles to Exodus 8 and verse, Exodus 20 verse 8 to verse 11. I want us to see true worship today. What is a true gospel that must and will be preached with or without you? The Bible says what? Remember 
the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day of the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, in it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy man's servant, nor thy maid servant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Listen. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the same day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So what did John, the revelator, say is true worship? Worship him who created heaven and earth. And what is the sign of the Sabbath? The Sabbath is to show who is a living and true God. And let me tell you, with no apology, under the authority of the Holy Spirit, that when that law is passed, Sunday worshiping will be a mark of the devil. My Bible tells me in the book of Isaiah that the Sabbath will be a sign between me and my people. Hold on. We worship on Sabbath, right? May God have mercy upon us. Are we keeping the Sabbath holy? You think coming to church on Sabbath and knowing Sabbath truth alone with safe? And the reason why we don't keep Sabbath holy is because we don't fully come in contact with Jesus. Because I'm standing on the word of God. He said that any man come in contact with Christ cannot remain the same. Though it's a road, it's a journey, it's a walk, but step by step with Jesus, you must overcome by God's grace. So that's the straight gospel of the kingdom, and this is the gospel must be sounded. I love one of my favorite prophet Joel. He said, blow the trumpet. In Zion and sound and alarm, we are God's trumpet blowers today. To sound the alarm in the holy mountain, let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the great day of the Lord is nigh at hand. May God have mercy upon us. God would have inspired the apostle Paul to write the book of Timothy, 2 Timothy 3. I'm going to read from verse 1 to 15. We're looking at characters of humanity at the end of time. And what did Paul say? This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. I remember I did a presentation on that. We love self, you not you, young people? If you read the book of Ezekiel and the book of Isaiah, there's an individual who Jesus said, I beheld Lucifer fall like lightning from heaven. He was kicked from heaven because he said, I will exalt myself above the throne of God. I, everything was about him. Be careful of the eye in us. Because self is obviously of the devil because Jesus was selfish. Selfless, sorry. Selfless. In every way, Jesus was selfless. So if today we are having selfishness in us, that means the spirit of the devil is working with us. Why are we not in prayer and sackcloth and ashes praying to overcome these sins that so easily besets us? May God have mercy upon us. You think coming to church on Sabbath alone is going to save? May God have mercy upon us. Paul says men shall be lovers of their own selves. We see that. People meeting in an accident. People taking out their phones, videoing before they help. Probably some people who would have heard about on the news who would have died from accident. Probably if people weren't just videoing that second or minute could have saved their lives. But because of selfishness to get followers and viewers and Instagram and TikTok and whichever social media platform, we love ourselves. And you know, interestingly, we say, and which I believe, that the devil would have attacked marriage and attacked the Sabbath, the institution, from the beginning of this earth. But you know one of the reasons why some of our marriages are failing? Selfishness. Full of ourselves. All about me, what she can do for me, what he can do for me. But that's for our next sermon. 
And he says what? Verse 2. They shall be covetous. Boasters. Proud. Blasphemers. Disobedient to parents. Unthankful. Unholy. Without natural affection. Homosexuality on the rise. Mercy. And you know when I check my Bible. Brother Picking. I realize in the Old Testament. Every time God went to destroy a nation. What is at the peak of society? Huh? Immorality. Peak of society. We see that happening. You want to tell me that God is not getting ready to do something to purge this earth from sin? To return for his chosen people. And he says what? Truth breakers. And I would say violating covenant or engagement. How many of us are truth breakers in our marriages today? Not even our marriages, but with our faith in God. Traitors, heady, and I, I, I pay attention to the heady one, intoxicated with wine. I wonder which texts talk about the doctrines of devil, the wine. The world is intoxicated, heady, with the doctrine of devils. When we have the truth, the plain thus said the Lord God Almighty and come church every Sabbath, a warm bench. And Paul said, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Having the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Now, brothers and sisters, these texts that would have read says these things will happen. At the end of the world. So are we living in the end? But I love what Jesus says in Matthew 24 verse 15. He says, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso read it, let him understand. Now when I read in Deuteronomy 28, God would have given a list of things we must do and things we should not do. Every action has a reaction. Amen? So if we follow God, good things follow. But if we go against desolation, trouble, problem will arise. And that's what Israel did of all. And God would have allowed um, Nebuchadnezzar to besieged Jerusalem and burn the city. But I also look at when Jesus said it as well. Because when I check Daniel, Daniel is telling me my understanding is that it is twofold. So it was for time, Christ's time and it was for now. So what are the similarities with the abomination of desolation? What are the abominations that they would have done? Well, I looked the other day, my friend called me, two persons called me, and they tell me about the Olympics. Some of us are sports followers. I would have heard, because I didn't watch it, and I'm not interested to watch it either, that they tried to replay what, the, the Last Supper, something of that sort. And I heard about the, uh, the, 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 the abominations they would have done in that opening ceremony. Hold on. Was Israel doing that of old? abominations about two years ago Brazil was replaying that bowing down to the golden calf abomination upon abomination hold on are people refusing Christ today this world filled with atheists did the Jews rejected Christ that he said your house is now left unto you desolate I wonder today if we are rejecting Christ and the Holy Spirit that God is saying today your house is left unto you desolate and what was the issue with the heathen world they rejected Christ and, and the Jews rejected the love of Christ so there were two sins back then the rejection of Christ and the rejection of the law of God. But I tell you, if you reject the law of God, you reject Christ. Because it says it would have taken one who is like my law to die for humanity. Who died for us? Jesus. 
So the law is telling us of the character of Christ. If you reject the law, you reject Christ. If you reject Christ, you reject the law. Is the world doing that today? So you're telling me that we are not in an abomination state. And when I look, when COVID came, everybody, almost everybody worried what is going to happen next. Confused. Hold on. Was Jerusalem surrounded by an army? Titus' army? Good. And did Titus' army dress back, retreat a bit? And they say what? Peace and safety. But thus said the Lord God Almighty, who all time saved the Adventist church. When you think it's peace and safety, sudden destruction. And when they thought everything was all right, Brother James, the Bible says, and historians would have told you and I've read about it in a great controversy, that Titus' army besieged and burned the city. So I'm telling you today, we are living in that time. Are you ready? To close out your earth's history. And I love what Mark says in Mark 13 verse 14 to 16. But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Standing where it ought not. Let him that read it understand. Then let them that be in Judah flee to the mountains. And I want to say today not only country living flee to Jesus. The Bible says that there's only one name on the earth where we can be saved. And that name is Jesus. Run to the mountain. The psalmist David said, I will look to the hills from whence cometh my help. Run to that hill, which is Christ Jesus. And he says... And let him that is on the whole stop not go down into his souls. I say to some of you today, to us today, who are striving for perfection, who are having our mountaintop experience with God, do not allow anybody to let you come down off that high with God. Salvation is a personal thing. Hold on to Jesus. And he says what? And let him that is in the field not turn back again for to take up his garment. If you're working the field of soul, don't turn back. Do not get weary. Keep working the field of soul. Because they are candidates for heaven. Jesus would have died for them. So Ezekiel 7 and verse 6 to 12. It says, an end is come. The end is come. It watcheth for thee. Behold, it is come. The morning is come unto thee, O thou that dwellest in the land. The time is come. The day of trouble is near, and not the sounding again of the mountains. No, will I shortly pour out my fury upon thee, and accomplish mine anger upon thee. And I will judge thee according to thy ways and will recompense thee for all thine abominations. Is the word committing abominations? Is God getting ready to do something about it? And mine eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity. I will recompense thee according to thy ways and thine abominations that are in the midst of thee. And ye shall know that I am the Lord that smiteth. Behold the day, behold it is come. The morning is gone for the rod hath blossomed, pride hath budded. Violence is risen up into a rod of wickedness. None of them shall remain. So if you think you're cherishing your sin and you shall remain pay attention to the word of God nor of their multitude nor of any of theirs neither shall there be wailing for them the time is come the day dry near let not the buyer rejoice nor the seller mourn for wrath is upon all the multitude thereof Isaiah 56 verse 1 thus saith the Lord Keep ye judgment and do justice. For my salvation is near to come and my righteousness to be revealed. Brothers and sisters, as we are coming down, Daniel 12 and verse 1. 
And at that time, shall Micah stand up. So I tell you, brothers and sisters, the battle is going to be raging. But there's a promise. There's a great hope. Daniel says, and at that time, shall Micah stand up. The great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. Even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. Brothers and sisters, the prophet Daniel states, the judgment is set and the books are open. The prophet Isaiah tells us of a book of iniquity that records our sins. Declaring, behold, your sins, it is written before me, says the Lord of hosts. The prophet Malachi speaks of the book of remembrance, which bears record of our good deed, which we have done. Jesus mentions the book of life, in which our names are written once we accept him. But brethren, the idea of one saved, always saved. It's not true. We must overcome sin daily. We need to deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow Jesus. We must be born again, baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Sanctified and justified by Christ. Fleeing from sin and despising iniquity. Striving for perfection in Jesus. That's how our name can remain or be written in the Lamb's book of life. Of ourselves we can't. For God knows that in us dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with us. But how to perform that which is good we find not. For the good that we would we do not. But the evil which we would not that we do. But Philippians 2 verse 13. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Submit your ways to God. And I can tell you. By faith. Jude 1 24. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Jesus is able to keep us from falling. And to present us faultless Before his presence with exceeding joy. So you wonder how you can do it. James says submit your ways to the Lord. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. God is able to keep you. And I close with one of my favorite passage in the Bible it says in Zechariah chapter 3 1 to 4 and he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him interesting the Bible says that the devil is the accuser of the brethren and the Lord said unto Satan the Lord rebuke thee O Satan I wonder how many of us God can say I rebuke you because this is a branch blocked from the burning fire. Would have gone through the fire of purification, justification, and sanctification. I have sanctified my servant. The Bible says, even the Lord that had chosen Jerusalem rebuked thee. This not, is not this a brand blocked out of the fire. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments. And stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garment from him. Brothers and sisters, Jesus wants to remove that filthy garment and give you the robe of righteousness, which can only be found in Jesus Christ. And he says, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. And I said, let them set a fear might upon his head. So they set a fear might upon his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by. Brothers and sisters, this is a remembrance that there is an investigative judgment. And that at any time now, we know that the, the judgment starts with the dead, but we know not when, when it goes to the living. And when we look, the Bible says that Jesus would have moved from holy to most holy in 1844 through the spirit of inspiration. Judgment, he said, anytime now. 
Our names can be called. Don't think even about going outside and probably meeting an accident and you just die. Think about, no, if your name should be called right now, would Jesus be able to say, this one is justified and sanctified by me. My blood, Father, my blood. So the question is, can Christ today say, take off his or her filthy garment? Can Christ say, my blood, Father, my blood has covered it all. Is thine heart right with God? Brothers and sisters, the great day of the Lord of hosts cometh, And who shall be able to stand? I close with the words of this song. Satan has been raging. Like never before, destruction all around us. Like a dark fatal storm. We wonder what will happen before this storm passes on. If we don't stand with Jesus. We must stand the test alone. Who will survive the storm that is raging? Who will be left when the trial is done? If the blood of the Savior is not the refuge you're under, then who shall survive the storm? Brother Malik, I ask you to play that trap for me. I'm going to ask Brother Mitchell to pray. And brothers and sisters, if going home with Jesus and to receive that seal of protection. Because interestingly, Ezekiel 9 and, and verse 4 says, God said to the angel, put a mark upon those who sigh and cry for the abomination that is upon the land. So if we want the seal of protection from God, we have to surrender. And if there is ever a time we need God, surely we need him now. You can walk to the altar if you want prayer. As I sing this song, and Elder Mitchell will pray for us.
times like these we need a savior we need a savior in times like these we need an anchor be very sure be very sure your rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure, yes, be very sure, your anger holds and grips the solid rock. Be very sure. invite those in the congregation to stand. <clears throat> so the appeal is simple. If you're here this afternoon, you have not made Jesus your choice and you want us to say that special prayer for you, just raise your hands or one of our elders will take your name so we can follow up with you after. Uh, see your hand, my sister, my brother. If you're here and you have turned your back on God and the call was clear for you to come home today and you want to have that special prayer you know you have wandered far away from God but today the call was clear to come home and you want us to pray just raise your hand so we can take your name and we can reach out to you after to talk with you to encourage you to come back before it is too late and the final appeal, if you're here today as a member of the church and you're okay, stay where you are. You are good if something should happen right now. You are good. Your record in heaven is perfect. Stay where you are. But if you believe today you need a savior on the church books for months, for years, but you feel right now that you're not where you ought to be. I think you should just use this opportunity. Just press. Let's pray together. You see, that walk of faith does a whole lot. Step out. But if you're okay, that's fine. Stay. Or if you can't move, we understand. If you may have children, that's fine. But if you think you're okay, you can stay. But if you think you need an injection of God's grace this afternoon, just step forward. Let's pray together. Let us bow our heads. Oh God, even this afternoon, I know I'm not even worthy. The people bowing before you, they can all testify that they are not even worthy. But we're happy this afternoon. That because of your blood, because of your grace, because of you being our high priest, our mediator, our intercessor, as unworthy as we are, we can be made worthy through your blood. So God, we come to you this afternoon recognizing how wretched we are. The preacher was clear in his utterances that salvation is an individual thing. It's an individual experience. So God, I pray even now that you will search each heart. The song says, search me, O God, and know my thoughts. Try me. Try Mitchell. Try the members at the, the altar. Try those who are in the congregation standing. Try us, and if there be any wicked ways in us, O God, I pray that you will purge us. You will watch us.
You will cleanse us. You will make us whole. Lord, we long to be perfectly whole. We want you forever to live in our souls. Break down every idol. Lord, some of us, we are, we are burdened down by the idols and the cares of this world. But break down every idol. Cast out every foe this afternoon. Lord, I don't want to be lost. I know those at the altar, they don't want to be lost. I know every one of us here, we don't want to be lost. But God, we are reminded that those who endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Lord, if we were to look in the mirror this afternoon, we'll recognize that we have not been good. Our words, our thoughts, our actions, the things that we know we should not have done, but we, we, we are still doing them. <laughs> The things, Lord, that we, we say day after day we don't want to do, we find ourselves doing it. The things we are saying we want to do to be more like Christ, we find that we are not doing those things. But I'm, I'm confident this evening that there's still hope in Jesus. Who can deliver us from this body of death? Who can deliver us? Thanks be to God who has never lost a case. Thanks be to God that today we can gain victory. Victory over sin and sinning. God, you know we want that victory today. At the altar, we saw the hand raised of, of our sister and brother. They have not yet surrendered their hearts fully to you. But they are here today, not by chance. But they're here because there'll be a message of warning to say, people get ready. They have answered the call, oh God, seal their decisions for time and eternity. There are some at the altar, our young people and others who have walked with you. But somehow along the way, they have turned their backs because the sneers of the devil, the pleasures of this life got them cornered. Some of them are not here. Some are by the highways and the byways and the hedges. But we are called for this week and onwards to go out to them and to say, come home. It is supper time. Lord, we have seen what the things happening around us. Just two weeks ago in Mandeville, if that nurse lady had known that she would be caught in the crossfire, maybe she would not have gone to Mandeville. We don't know when we'll be caught in the crossfire of this earth's struggles. But God, I pray that every one of us will make our calling and election sure in Christ Jesus. So that young woman, that young man who have walked away from you, bring them home fully today. For many of us, as we close this prayer, we have been on, uh, on this walk with you five years, ten years, 50 years, 30 years. But if we were to really look in our lives, we will recognize that we are not moving. We are not, we are like stagnant. Spiritually, we have no desire for the word of God. Spiritually, we have no desire for prayer. Spiritually, we have no desire to tell others about you. Spiritually, we are just so complacent. But God, today the call is clear. Today the call is clear. Salvation has once again come to this house. I pray that we would heed the call. Church membership is no guarantee of a space in heaven. So while we are on the church's record, I pray today by God's grace, will be on the record books in heaven, the book of life, so that when you shall come, none of us here today will be missing from the throng. So have thine own way, God. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter, we are the clay. Mold us and make us after your will. We are waiting this afternoon, yielded, and still, and I close by saying, pass us not. Oh, gentle Savior, 
hear our humble cry while on others thou art calling do not pass Mitchell by do not pass me by do not pass us by Savior blessed Savior hear please hear a humble cry while on others thou art calling do not pass us by. Thank you for victory. Chain breaker, thank you for deliverance. Save us, we pray. In Jesus' worthy name. Amen.